Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Tyler Evans from Arite Chiropractic coming at you live today talking about Meniere's disease. So Meniere's disease is a, um, it's a, it's a rough uh, thing for people to go through. And about 0.1% of the population uh, has Meniere's disease and or has been, you know, has symptoms related to Meniere's disease. So Meniere's disease is um, this kind of uh, odd oddity in the medical profession where um, there are three symptoms. It's tinnitus, which is ringing in the ear, um, vertigo, which is a feeling of, of literally like you're just spinning and the world spinning and uh, you, uh, you get really sick. Um, generally, uh, you know, it knocks people down and they'll have those vertigo attacks for somewhere between uh, 20 minutes to more than, you know, a few hours. And uh, oftentimes those vertigo attacks, um, they'll be called drop attacks where they literally can't get off the floor and it, it affects their lives in a very big way. Um, and then the last thing is uh, a fullness in the ear or, or hearing loss. And, um, and these symptoms may come on over time. They might happen kind of uh, at different times. And, uh, and what happens is when they go to the doctor, uh, there's no, no uh, you know, reason why the things happened. And so they get uh, kind of uh, pigeonholed into this, this diagnosis of Meniere's disease. Well, you have all three of these symptoms and it must be Meniere's disease. Um, and, I, and I know that that's uh, kind of an oversimplification, but that's, that's really how it works. Um, and there aren't many treatments for Meniere's disease. So when uh you know for instance someone goes in to uh tr like figure out what's going on and if there are ways to help it um most of the times the way that the uh, it would be an eent an ears eyes nose throat doctor um <clears throat> usually or maybe a neurologist that would treat them and what they would do is they would they would give them uh first a low sal low salt diet to try to balance the inner ear because the inner ear is the uh, is the issue here and the inner ear is the part of the body that does all the work in terms of hearing so the the sound uh, uh, nerve stimulation goes in here and then goes back through this uh, vestibulocochlear nerve here to the brain as well as the cochlea here and the semicircular canals they do balance. So that's where the vertigo problem comes from. So the tinnitus and the hearing loss come from the, uh, the, the, uh, the bones here, the auditory ossicles, and then the cochlea and the semicircular canals do the, um, do the, the part that's the balance or the vertigo piece. And so what happens is they, they believe is that, um, sorry, is that uh, this area here uh, does build fluid and it's called endolymph, so it's in the deep part of the inner ear. So this is the inner ear, it's behind the tympanic membrane. This is the kind of middle ear, um, and then this is the external part of the ear, okay? And so when we talk about this, we're talking about the inner ear, and oftentimes the treatments, like I said, are a low salt diet. Um, they might do uh, uh, some sort of uh, uh, diuretic pill, water pills to to get the fluid out of the ear so all the treatment is around getting the fluid out of the ear well why is the fluid in the ear in the first place is one is one thing um, <clears throat> and then uh, so these these treatments are trying to get the fluid out of the ear if that doesn't work they resort to uh, puncturing this tympanic membrane with a with an injection and injecting antibiotic uh, into the ear uh, um, I forget the name of it right now, but uh, it's a it's a common one that they use. Gentamicin, that's what it is, and uh, they use that quite often. What it does is it destroys the inner ear so that it just no longer works. Um, so it's no longer sensing, um, or that you know there's there's uh, you know an, another way to do that. But but gentamicin and the steroid is the other one. Um, but those are the most common ways, and so. You know, th those are not great solutions, and oftentimes those treatments don't fix the problem, and, and it comes back, um, and it kind of, you know, is in and out of symptomatic uh, uh, up and down time for patients. So that's not, not a great solution, and what we found over the years is that oftentimes Meniere's patients will come into the office, and they will have uh, 
you know, the, these symptoms and it may or maybe they haven't been diagnosed with Meniere's, but they have these symptoms um, or they have been diagnosed and, the, and they, they don't know why. But I ask them questions like, have you ever had head and neck trauma? Um, have you had a car accident? Did you, you know, hit your head? Did you have concussions in the past? Um, and we often hear, yes, they've had a lot of head and neck trauma, uh, maybe a big car accident, like a rollover car accident, a whiplash, um, or concussions in like football or field hockey, things like that. And, uh, or it can be just from sitting for a long time in poor postures for 10 years or more. And we see often that these patients will have a lot of head tilt and they'll have a shoulder that's higher on one side. And they'll also have a hip that's higher on one side and a, a leg length imbalance. So everything's getting thrown off from uh, top down and, and bottom up. And so their head and their neck are trying to deal with all this information and uh, it's overloading it and stressing out, it's becoming inflamed. Uh, and so what we do in a chiropractic office and what the paper I'm reviewing today is chiropractic management of a 40 year old, 40 year old female patient with Meniere's disease. And oftentimes it's between 20 and 50 years old where this disease sets in um, and, and gets diagnosed. But what we're doing here is we're working with the joint at the top of the spine, the upper cervical spine, that is the most freely movable. And so it's, also, it's the joint that gives you the most range of motion, but it's the most easily compromised area of the spine. Uh, what holds it together are muscles, ligaments, and tendons, not discs. Not, there's, there aren't discs that hold the bones together like down lower. Uh, and this joint can get locked out of place and when it does, it creates all kind of uh, input into the brain about imbalances in the body. And so you can have these compensations in posture and, and how the head is sitting. And so the inner ear, which is constantly trying to balance the body. So the inner ear, ear here, the semicircular canals, their job uh, right here is to balance the, the head on the spine. And so if the spine is out of alignment, uh, it throws the head off, it throws the eyes off, and so we have this uh, uh, cervical ocular reflex, we have a vestibular ocular reflex where the eyes, the neck, and the, uh, and the inner ear, they're what tells your body where things are at in space, where your head's at in space. And so they're constantly working to try to balance, but if that upper neck is off, it can throw any one of those, those uh, or it can cause the eyes or the inner ear to, to um, basically have a, a, a reaction. And so in an upper cervical chiropractic office, what we do is we assess that, we check the eyes, we check the balance of the posture, how the shoulders, how the head are sitting, uh, how the hips are, how the legs are balanced. And uh, we do an exam to correct that misalignment in the upper neck with 3D imaging, uh, gently without any twisting or popping. And when we do, what we often see is that things like vertigo, uh, dizziness, they get better because we've corrected the alignment problem uh, to allow the vestibular system in the inner ear and the eyes to relax and to, to, um, to have less inflama inflammation, less, less nerve stress. And so uh, we've seen a lot of Meniere's patients over the years in our office, and it's, it's really a shame because 0.1% uh, of the population, which might sound like a very small percent of people, uh, but you know, the, however, 100 million people, however many hundreds of millions of people we have in the United States, uh, a lot of those people could possibly be getting at least supportive care in an upper cervical chiropractic office if they knew about this work. Uh, and you know that's um, that's something we're trying to get the word out there. So if you know of someone that suffers from uh, uh, Meniere's disease, it can be highly related to upper neck problems. And if we get that upper neck balanced, it can help, if not uh, relieve, the symptoms of Meniere's disease. So uh, and and again, it's it's not a it's not a magic wand. There's no magic fixes for things. But if we balance the spine, it can help the inner ear heal. And again, if you have questions, uh, this is Dr. Tyler Evans from Arite Chiropractic. We're here in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Phone number 603-380-9184. That's 603-380-9184. And uh, I hope this helps. I hope this uh, gives some hope to those uh, suffering out there. And uh, we hope to hear from you. And have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.